What is up everybody? Welcome back to the channel. Today we are diving into my top five lures for the month of February. This one's gonna be good. I apologize to all of my followers out there. The month of January, I did not drop this video. So I'm sorry, but I promise to you this, okay? I'm going to bring it today. I'm gonna give you a ton of information, a ton of things um, that I think are gonna be applicable for this month all over the country and might start to maybe into bleed into the month of March. So you're gonna wanna listen to this one before we jump into the lures that I have selected. Um, big shout out to Magellan Outdoors. They sponsored this video and ultimately they provide me with all the clothing that I wear on the water, off the water. Um, they're available at Academy Sports and Outdoors. I will drop the link in the description below. This is the actual Gator Fleece hoodie, Magellan Outdoors Gator Fleece hoodie. I'll drop the link in the description below. My absolute favorite sweatshirt. Um, it's warm. It works well in those, you know, 60 degree days, but it also works well when it's cold. You can layer up all that good stuff. Check them out. Um, now on to the video. It's the number one ranked angler in the world, Jacob Wheeler. Jacob Wheeler of Chattanooga. Jacob Wheeler. Wow! How are you feeling? Fishing for a living. Uh, I'm on cloud nine. Let's go. We're here in Mexico. We are in the Dominican Republic. You know, that's the reason why you travel is to, to see different kinds of culture. This place is unbelievable. So I'm gonna tell you a couple different tips that have helped me over the years. I know this is how I provide for them. It just makes me try to work harder because that little girl is totally dependent on me. Okay, so now on to the fishing side and the lure side selection of what I'm going to do um, and what I've selected. I, I have a lot of baits, but there actually is six different types or six different baits sitting here in front of me. Um, and I, I'm going to start off by sort of diving into what is February for most of what I'm thinking about. Okay, so I'm thinking water temperatures is my bait selection is water temperatures in the low 40s. In some areas, I'm talking like Kentucky, even Indiana, if there's still open water. Um, and then you have water temperatures down south. Um, you get into Tennessee, you get into uh, Georgia, Alabama, Texas, high 40s, low 50s. So typically that's what you're, now down in Florida, Florida's a very unique fishery. Um, and, and so I don't have, I, it bleeds into it a little bit, but Florida is so crazy because the fish will actually start to spawn big time right now. So that makes it a little bit more difficult, but for the majority of the country, we're talking major pre-spawn in February is the resetting month. What I mean by that, it is everything has started to reset. You got that cold weather. We've had a lot of rain around this part of the country and ultimately the water starts to get stained up and the fish start to slide up shallower. Now, this is one thing that you need to understand about wintertime fishing. Wintertime fishing on a highland reservoir, a lot of times it, it, it is a deep water tactics or deep water typically uh, has to be close to the area you're fishing um, to generate bites. Unless that place has a lot of grass and those fish are just up there and they have the forage base up there a little bit shallower. Now, on a lot of highland reservoirs, like the one I live on right here, in, in, in lowland reservoirs, my fault, lowland reservoirs down here, like the one I'm, I'm fishing all the time on Lake Chicamago or the Tennessee River, those places, deep water is a relative term because I would say the majority of our bass in the wintertime winter in six foot or less. And so that's a lot of, you know, even going to Louisiana, going um, some places in Texas, a lot of those fish sometimes winter in pockets, in, in the backs of pockets or on flats, or, you know, they're close to deep water, but they seem, seem to winter a little bit shallower than like their summertime haunt. So without, without all further ado, that's sort of what my, my mindset is right now. Um, and, and, and I'm my number one pick. <laughs> number one pick is going to be, can you guess? Rattling bait. Oh, I'm gonna give you another one. Hold up, let me just, about this one. Okay, lipless crankbaits. It is time, my friends. It is time to pick up the lipless crankbaits. I have a couple different ones here, and this is also really the month that red, red crankbaits become a bigger deal. When those fish start. Um, to really bite red. January, I've caught several fish in, in January, but I, I want 
the days to start to get a little bit longer. There's something about when I transition from shad patterns to my red crankbaits and more, you know, more my craw patterns, it, and this works for, you know, square bills and everything else. I typically want the days to start to get a little bit longer. And typically it comes with spring rains as well. Water clarity is a big deal in that. And that's when I'm picking up those red lipless crankbaits. This guy right here is an Arashi vibe. I've caught several fish on it. Actually, this one right here specifically is like classic crawl. Ott won the Bassmaster's Classic on it. Um, I got second in that one. And so Otter wrecked him on this little dude right here. It, and, and so really for me though, the, the key with red, I, I like the red hues, but I really feel like the most important part of it is the underbelly, the actual color of the belly. Orange to me is probably the most important color. Red is important, um, but it's, it's that orange to me that really triggers the fish in the body. I just, that's my own personal preference. That's what I think. So I like to have, this is a brighter orange, like more like a fire craw orange. And this is more of a dull orange. So water's a little cleaner. I'm probably going to throw him. Water's a little dirtier. I'm probably going to throw this guy right here. Um, and, and so don't, don't be caught slipping on, on that side of things. Now, I will still be throwing shad patterns as well. I'm going to have shad patterns rigged up. Um, and I'm throwing these on flats, grass flats, on um, areas, you know, the uh, drains. The thing that really is interesting to me about this time of year, um, the fish really get in the middle and the center of the pockets. And what I mean by that is they'll get out there in, in, in what they call the drain in Texas or in the middle of the gut. Um, and so when you're fishing shallower bodies of water, the fish are living shallower than 10 foot of water normally in the wintertime. They'll get out there on straight mud. Um, typically you're, you know, side scanning or you're graphing around or you're looking visually with your eyes and there might, water might be low and be like, man, there's rock there and you can catch them. Rock is still going to be a major player in the, in, in the springtime, just the fact that the craws do live there, but mud, um, they'll just get out there around bait. And that's what I'm picking up, uh, more of the shad pattern. It's like a little more of a chartreuse hue. This guy right here is a 13 fishing magic man, um, three quarter ounce. Now the key with this whole deal is the reason why I picked up a lipless crankbait for this month more specifically is I can cast him out there and I can wind him in in a foot of water, but I also can fish a spade up to 10 or 12 feet deep by yo-yoing it. Yo-yoing is a technique. You throw it out there, you let it hit the bottom, you pull it up that bait wiggles and falls back down to the bottom. It wiggles, falls back to the bottom. So I do this with multiple different baits. And so the lighter the bait, I'll even do this in a foot or two foot of water when the water is really cold, when you have a really big cold front that comes through. So you're up there, you know, in Indiana or Ohio or Illinois or anywhere there's still open water and you have a shallower water, shallower body of water, um, they'll bite a lipless crankbait in the coldest temperatures. It's just like a blade bait, but it doesn't fall as fast. So that's why I like to transition a little bit. And the water tends to get a little dirtier this time of year because you have snow runoff on some of those places. You have, you have big rains. And that's when I'll yo-yo that bait up there, let it hit the bottom, let it hit the bottom. And they typically will always bite it on the fall. As far as rod choice, seven foot, medium, heavy, medium action rod, somewhere in there, medium plus. That's what I would suggest. 12 to 14 pound line and roll with it. Now, as far as casting it in around grass, I throw like a seven, two or seven, three, medium, heavy, a little bit faster action um, towards a tip, something where I can load up parabolic bend is what I like. So that is number one. I told you guys I'm gonna have a mouthful. So that is number one, lipless crankbaits in general. Um, just catch fish this time of year and you better have them ready to roll because you're, you're going to need, you're going to need a lipless crankbait. So number two, pick number two. Okay. I'm going to, I'm going to do this. You guys know it. I, I like doing this a lot. Um, it's going to be a jig. I, I, to me, the best months to throw a jig um, are in the winter months. It's something about it that I, I don't know if it's the fact that it just has the right profile. This is a little bit more of a standard size, size jig. This is more of a smaller profile jig, some more finesse style. So I'm gonna show you why, um, I'll pick both of these. Now, if I'm fishing a little bit dirtier water, I'm, I'm talking targeting four to six pound fish, I'm probably gonna go with the more standard size size jig. Um, if, I'm, if I'm really having a tough time to get it, generate a bite and the water's really cold or cleaner, then I'm going to pick up the finesse style jig. doesn't mean you're going to catch smaller fish in the finesse jig. It's just typically you're going down in size. Um, so now right here I have 
the back of this little jig right here, I have a, a double twin tail grub. So that's what I'll throw a lot of times in the winter time. Um, it's not a ton of action. It has a little bit of action. It doesn't have a lot of resistance. Um, I like throwing this particular trailer, like a double tail grub or a chunk. Now, this is something that I, it's a pet peeve of mine. I want, I want to ask you guys um, your opinion on this. So it, I want to know if you guys do this. Do you, on a chunk, do you thread him on or do you just stick him on? Okay, so you just stick him on there. A lot of people stick him on just like that, okay? All right, sort of like the Uncle Josh pork frog like I showed you guys last time. I don't like doing this, and I'll tell you why. So when you pitch that bait into a log or a rock or whatever, it comes down and that skirt's, you know, flared up. He's going to be, uh, it, as it's falling, but when it hits the, the bottom, that skirt flares out and it looks like there's two different things. There's two different, there's two, it's like, what the heck's going on right here? Like, it just looks goofy. Like, you got this thing just hanging off of there. Like, does that look like a crawdad to you? I like just, no. And that's what it looks like in the water to me. So... If you do like this, I, I, I do one thing that I will thread it on. It's a little bit bigger profile. I'll take a little piece of plastic, okay? And it just needs to be something that's not going to put a lot of drag on your jig, especially if you're throwing a little bit lighter jig. You want to make sure. And I'll just thread him on there. And there's no trailer to that jig. There is no just a piece of plastic. You can put a little worm piece. And then I will slide that on there. So then what will happen is it's not, it still looks like one piece. When it hits the bottom, there's still profile there a little bit for that, that jig, you know, really to, to look like more of a crawfish. It keeps it up. Okay. So if you're putting a chunk on like this, that's what I would recommend. Personal preference. It's what I have confidence in. And if I'm going to do that, I want a little bit bigger. Um, and there is times that I feel like the action sways a little bit better with that, that way, but I, that's just sort of my own personal preference. Now, for me, typically, if I have a little bit bigger chunk, I'm I'm typically Texas rig or you know threading it on. So I'll thread this guy on real quick here. I'll show you what I'm talking about. Um, this is not necessarily the chunk that I, I really thread on, but it doesn't look bad. You know, it looks like one complete package that way. It makes it more compact. Typically, you're going to generate a few more bites like that. Um, that's just sort of personal preference, but that's something that I, I want to hear your opinion on. I've been thinking about this. I don't have a jig sponsor. I don't, I, I just throw whatever jig I like. I have a lot of them that I, I like. Um, I've been thinking about potentially making my own jigs and, and selling them. I don't know if that's something you guys would be interested in. Let me know in the comment section below. Um, just something that I, I, I was like, there's some jigs out there that I don't really feel like are the perfect jig. And I feel like I can make the perfect jig for me. Um, just wanted to know your opinion on it. If you guys would like to see that, let me know. Comment section below. Okay. Pick number three. Pick number three is going to be one that I don't know if many of you are going to be able to guess. The exact bait. Okay. It is a crankbait, but I don't think, I don't know if you've, you've really, I don't know if that many of you probably thrown this. Some of you probably have, um, but this bait is an absolute killer, absolute killer pre-spawn bait. I'm going to, can you guess? By the rattle. If you can guess by the rattle, you're good. I'm gonna give you a second. No, maybe, maybe. Okay, here it is. The Lure Jensen Speed Trap. This little dude right here. <laughs> hey boys, this sucker is loud. It, it works well um, in multiple different situations. The one thing about this bait is it's super buoyant. And what I love about this, it goes over cover fairly well. Um, it's also a really good crankbait to throw around grass, the dead grass or the little bit of grass that's starting to grow or just up off the bottom. This bait right here really goes through grass really well, rock as well. And this bait runs, I'm gonna say six, five to seven feet deep. Actually, believe it or not, it does run about five to seven feet deep. Um, has a, has more of a square bill type aspect. And this bait's been a long, around for a long, long time. Um, this is Crystal Crawdad. I mean, it is an absolute killer when it comes to, I mean, that's just like, that's so pretty. I mean, they did a great job with that. Black back, it goes into red, has the orange that I was talking about. Right, so it's more muted orange. And then it has a bright orange on the belly. Perfect color combination to catch wintertime fish and pre-spawn fish. I mean, that thing right there, gosh, 
it's, it's, it really is an awesome little crankbait. Now, I'm gonna be targeting, throwing this bait, I'm gonna fish around stumps, I'm gonna be fishing around grass, um, where I'm not throwing the lipless crankbait. Say it's, I can't get the half ounce lipless crankbait down to those fish. I'm gonna throw this bait where I can crank it, I can cover more water more efficiently by cranking a crankbait through that stuff and pulling it and let it come up. The thing is, like I said, this bait is also very, um, it's, it's a lighter bait, like a lot harder to cast. Um, but it just, it gets bit. And, and I, I know all the boys, shout out to all the guys out in California on the Cal Delta. Uh, Mark Daniels has told me plenty of stories about this little plug right here, catching some, I think he said he caught like an 11 pounder on this thing back in the day. I'm um, a quarter ounce. This is, I think the half ounce or the three eighths ounce or five sixteenths ounce. I forget exactly what the, the, it, it's lighter. It's not a real heavy plug, but it does catch them. So that is number three for your boy. Number three is a speed trap. Uh, okay. Okay. So going to number four and number number four. Okay. Um, I I I sort of gone back and forth, and this is there's a new crankbait out um, that is really something that catches a lot of fish, and there's the original that just freaking wrecks them too. So um, I'm gonna say this. Okay. Here is the Rapala DT8. This is my fourth pick, um, but I'm gonna sort of bring it with a DT6 and a DT8 because I feel like you gotta. They're, they're both very unique. Um, the DT8 is just came out just recently, just getting into stores right now. This bait runs about seven to ten feet deep. Has the same action of the six. A little bit different angle on the bill, as you can see, more typical to like the actual uh, DT10, but it, it just gets down there. Um, and, and where am I gonna be targeting fish with this crankbait right here? This one's a little bit more silent. It doesn't ha have the rattles that that Lure Jensen Speed Trap has. So it's, it does have some rattles to it, but it's not much. It's not very loud. It's not very aggressive. This is a step up from the shad wrap. I love a shad wrap this time of two, this time of year too. It's hard. I can't pick them all. I know. I know. I'm sorry, but I have a couple of different colors that I like. I mean, demon, of course. Um, any craw pattern, dark brown crawdad. Um, that's another really good one. Uh, and a six actually runs probably about five to. I'm gonna give it eight feet deep. You can actually get them down there pretty deep. Um, but as far as water clarity goes, if you're dealing with super clean water, I'm going to recommend like a root beer color. Okay. Root beer um, for a craw pattern. If you're, if you're really targeting fish that are eating craws, again, orange on the belly. I tell you, just catch them. Then stepping up, if I was going to go to more of like uh, the water's just getting a little bit of stain to them, but still fairly clean, dark brown crawdad. Um, I think it's like red crawdad or something like that. This guy right here has a red belly, reddish orange belly, again, orange, um, with more of a green top. It still can work well in cleaner water because it's, you know, you got to think this bait when it's hitting the bottom, you're seeing that back and it's green. It's, 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 um, you know, it's, it's more natural, but then it's, it's rolling and you're seeing a little bit of that red and that orange. Chartreuse brown. Um, would be my super muddy watercolor and or demon, something that's super fluorescent. But again, orange on the belly. This guy's a little orange throat, um, but brown. The, the top color of a crankbait is actually really important because you got to think about this. Typically, when we're cranking, your bait is coming down through there and it's hitting the bottom. You want to be hitting the bottom with these crankbaits, okay? You want to be hitting the bottom, especially, this is more of those channel swing banks, those little bit steeper 45 degree banks. You want to be hitting the bottom. So when that fish is looking over, you know, he's not sitting there probably like right here. He sees that crankbait, he might look at it. He has to like, he sees that brown and then it just flashes chartreuse. You know, it looks like a crawdad. If you look at the top of that back, it's brown. It's like more of that green pumpkin brown look. And then you have that chartreuse. So it's it's rolling and you see a little bit of chartreuse on the side. It's almost like just a little flash. That's that's why I thought chartreuse brown one is pretty, pretty stained up or, or that demon color. But that would be my next pick of a DT6 DTA. Um, you can, can't go wrong with the DT6. It's probably everybody's favorite. Well, one of some, I mean, most people's favorite pre-spawn crankbait. It targets that depth zone that's really well. Um, and, it, and it's the right amount of wiggle wobble. It wiggles and wobbles. And what I mean by that is it just doesn't, it doesn't have a 
giant wiggle, um, like a wiggle wart, which is still good in the pre-spawn too. It's another good crap plug, but it has enough action to attract them from a decently long distance, but it, it's not too aggressive to get those fish that are really pressured to trigger in the bite. So that is um, that is one of my picks. My next one is another crankbait. I'm sorry, I got this is this is the season. So this is like the time for crankbait fishing. Really, like February bleeding into like the couple weeks of March. This is like. If, at least in the south, okay? The time will come for everybody a little bit n further north. Um, more of your March month is when I'm going to really be cranking even more. But you're talking about, you know, the lower half of the United States from Kentucky south, basically. If you draw a line across that. This is the time when that water starts to get stained up. It's good. Um, next but not least, our next on the list is a OG Tiny. Okay, this little crankbait right here um, just came out as well. Ott Defoe designed this bait. This is actually a bait that he designed and he used himself for the last 10 years. He's been throwing it. And he threw it on a spinner rod. This bait actually has a decent amount of weight to it. You can throw it on a bait caster, typically on 10-pound fluorocarbon or 10-pound monofilament as well. I would recommend. It runs up to about four feet deep. Okay, that's the reason why I'm picking this crankbait is it's a flat side. It's it's sort of my substitute for a rapplet shad wrap, okay? This crankbait has a little bit more of a kick to it. Um, it has a little bit more kick to it. It has a little thump to him, but he's still a small profile. Um, has really good hooks on him. I believe those are short shank number five VMC hybrid trebles. They come right out of the package like that. Um, and so for me, that's a crankbait. Like when I'm fishing in the backs of pockets or I'm fishing a little bit, you know, a little bit more of a flatter bank and I cannot trigger them on a lipless crankbait or that DT6 or DT8 is getting down there too deep or that, you know, this is a crankbait that's really going to trigger those fish when they are in a funny mood. Um, flat sides, with the pressure that we have, flat sides just around the country, flat sides are becoming a staple to be throwing because they just, they're just a little bit different. They're not as aggressive. They trigger those fish and it just, it is a reaction bite. If a fish is sitting here on this log and that crankbait, crankbait comes by and deflects off, that fish just goes up there, grabs it and bites it sometimes. So that's, I mean, I have OG crawdad color. Um, and then this one right here is classic crawl. It just came out um, recently. So those are the two I'm picking. Um, we have one more. All right, last but not least, I know I made this long, so... Uh, if you're a beginner to this, I, 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 <laughs> some of, I mean, it's really good information. I'm telling you the goods. I promise you. This is the thing I promise to all of you. I'm not going to tell you a bait that does not catch them. Now, it might not catch them every day, uh, but I'm, I'm recommending the stuff that I will be throwing, you know, this year, this February in, in, in a lot of the conditions around the country. And that's what I want to give when, in these videos is to give you guys an understanding of some of the selection of what I'm using and why. You know, really the why is important. I want to inform you all. I want to teach you all. Um, I want to have fun with it. You know, it's just a combination of it all. And, and that's what we're trying to do with these videos. So last but not least is, drum roll. You will probably guess this one and you're going to be like, of course. Uh-huh. Jerk bait. I, I have to have a jerk bait. February, okay. Clear water impoundment, stained water. You gotta have a jerk bait ready to roll. This is a shallow one. This is a local special. This is a shadow wrap. Um, this little dude right here catches the heck out of them. And they're both very, very, they're a little bit different, okay. One, um, this is a slow sink right out of the package. This guy runs about a one to three feet. This one runs about one to three feet as well. Um, some different colors. Um, but I'm also gonna have you know, shadow wrap deep, run under a little bit deeper water. If you, it's all about depth that you're really targeting. So if I'm fishing, um, you know, lowland reservoirs or in, in these places that I, I feel like these fish are shallower, then obviously I'm gonna pick a shallower, shallower jerk bait. The big key with a jerk bait is this when you're fishing shallow water, you do want your bait to suspend. Very, it's very important. For your bait to suspend and not be on the bottom. If your jerk bait is on the bottom, and I upgrade these hooks right here, so I'll fish this in like five foot of water where this bait's slow sinking. I still like a slow sink sometimes, 
But if that bait's sitting on the bottom, you're probably not going to trigger a bite. So the key is to have that bait up off the bottom. So when it's there, you know, in three foot of water over, you know, five, it just slows sitting in there. Because if you have a fish, it's like a lot of times when it's really, really cold, you really got to slow down. Um, and you got to allow those fish to sort of come up there and see it. Okay, boop, boop, they bite it. Um, you don't want it to be laying on the bottom. If it's laying on the bottom, you need to switch your jerk bait out to where it's a little bit shallower running jerk bait. Um, that is a big key. And the other thing is you don't want it to float. For me personally, I do not like them to float. I do want them either to suspend or I want them to slow sink. Not sink fast, slow sink. Um, now, as far as the deeper jerk baits, I will say uh, this is a Loco special. This is a, a Shatter Wrap Deep. Um, there's also a old school old school X Wrap. I've caught a lot of bass on this one. It's X Wrap Deep too. So to me... Uh, a deeper running plug um, is really good. A deep, deeper running jerk bait is really good when you're trying to get down there in a little bit deeper zone. I will upgrade my hooks to where it's slow sinking most of the time. Again, paying attention to making sure I'm not on the bottom. Ah, whoop, almost got hooked right there. Making sure I'm not hooked on the bottom um, is a big part of that, or snag, snagging stuff up off the bottom. Keeping that bait up off the bottom is important. So if you are in that area throwing a deeper jerk bait and you're getting hitting the bottom and you're getting too much of that bottom contact, you probably are going to want to switch to a shallow running jerk bait. Um, I, I've caught fish in super cold water jerking them fast. I've caught fish in super uh, super cold water jerking them super slow. So cadence is everything, but typically from what I've learned with with forward facing sonar and before that, I mean I'm catching bass. All over, the, all over the place with it way before forward facing sonar, but it does help you understand it is a lot of times when you're fishing over deeper water, you need to have a little bit longer pauses because the fish have to see it from so long farther away. So they have, it's not that you're, they're sitting there looking at it and they're biting it. It's the fact that you got to imagine the fish is 10 feet away from you when you jerk it. And he's like slowly swimming up there to look at the bait. And then by the time he gets on, he go jerk, 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 catch him. So it's a little tidbit, something that I've learned from looking at them. Um, and that's how I try to like envision it a lot of times regardless is, okay, if I'm fishing over a deeper water, I have to draw those fish up from deeper. They're, just a, little, they're a little bit more lethargic. They're not going to move as fast in the summertime, and I'm going to have to allow that bait to sit there to where those fish can sort of slow up there and they think it's a dying shad and then make them react. So that is it right there. That's all we have for today. Uh, it's been a lot. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. Um, this season is really, really close. We are just a few days away from leaving for the first event stage one on, uh, on Lake Darbone, Caney Reservoir and Bussy Break in West Monroe, Louisiana. So I'm excited for this one. I got a lot of stuff to pack up, a lot of different things going on. Um, thank you guys so much for following the channel. Truly, really appreciate it. It's, it's, it means a lot to us and we could not do this without you. So thank you so much. If you do not subscribe to the channel and you've made it all the way this far, hats off to you. I, I, you are a true fan. I know I ramble on a lot of times, but I really appreciate you guys following along. And, uh, Hey, here's a 2022. Let's, let's make this thing awesome. Let's have a good time. And hopefully y'all learned a little bit something from this video. We'll see you on the next one.